Greetings and welcome back to Into the Pit. If you like my channel, hit that like button and subscribe for many more reviews and some interviews coming up again soon. Today I'd like to look at one of the most influential cover art designers and illustrators in the history of heavy metal. Um, we're talking obviously about Mr. Derek Riggs. Now, probably not the first uh, music illustrator to do series of works. Um, we know people like Roger Dean who did various covers for Yes, bands like Yes, and uh, also Magnum, the few that I know of. But I think Derek Riggs was probably the first to accompany a band over such a long time span. Um, if you look at today, um, you have people like Vincent Locke, We've worked with bands like Cannibal Corpse, or he's exclusively worked for Cannibal Corpse until this day. And um, then you obviously have people like um, Dan Seagrave. Now you have Eliran Cantor and many others, um, Claudio Bergerman. But um, yeah, Vincent Locke comes to mind and Derek Riggs, who have really followed a band's career and been sort of really influential in contributing to the fame of the band in that they have created a mascot and a look to accompany all the albums. I think um, the creation of Eddie is, is an integral part of Maiden's success. Um, it has really boosted their, um, their merchandise sale and the entire image of the band, creating a, a stunning image with, in every album. And he's obviously not only done the album covers, he's done the, 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 the tour merchandise, various tour images, singles, um, everything to basically accompany a world tour, really. So to dig out all the Derek Riggs artworks is, is a monster effort. I've tried to focus on the main albums he's done, and I'll show you a couple. But yeah, what can be said, Derek Riggs, highly influential, and I think he was a really, probably most of the artists you'll speak to, like Seagrave or Vincent Locke and stuff, uh, would be hard-pressed to deny that Derek Riggs has sort of popped up on their screen, you know? So, Really um, a very clever marketing decision I made and have done there. I mean, from the beginnings of, you've probably all seen the early Eddie face that they had, that probably that was some of their first shows, which was still very rudimentary and very simple. Whether Riggs was already involved there, I'm not sure. Uh, I, my guess is he probably developed that further and then created the Eddie we know. Um, sadly, I think it was after um, No Prayer for the Dying that I made no longer worked with Derek Riggs. Whether it was about royalties or... Some sort of disagreement, I have no idea, but then um, management, uh, maiden management must have, Rod Smallwood must have said, uh, well, then you're out, boy. And uh, quite honestly, I must say, the album artwork hasn't gotten better, you know. it's. Um, I still look back at the Derek Riggs work and I think it's the best maiden has, has had. We can argue about which is the best Iron Maiden album cover of all time. Um, I think it's a tough decision, but for me personally, it would probably be somewhere in time, just because of the detail and, I mean, the work that must have gone into that is phenomenal. And I can still stare at that cover endlessly today. Um, second for me would probably then be um, Power Slave, also because of the details. And um, isn't it wonderful, uh, Derek also always hid these little things on the covers. I think it's not on all of them, but he had his little symbol, uh, which I'll drop here in the corner. <laughs> it's that little circle with the arrow to the bottom and the two circles, little smaller circles. Then um, album covers like Live After Death, um, always had a cat somewhere, a little black cat. Then obviously the Edgar Allan Poe quotes on the tombstone for that one. Um, yeah, he's also, you could always find little hidden elements everywhere. I think on Somewhere in Time, um, Derek's logo was actually on the Eddie's crotch. <laughs> so, and I mean, we can talk endlessly about Somewhere in Time with all the hidden things. Ace's High Bar and Two Minutes to Midnight, all these things, all the old songs hidden somewhere in a visual aspect. So, I mean, phenomenal, really great. I mean, what a what an added value to the music and... and um, I remember listening to Maiden albums and, and just staring at the covers and, and getting lost in this world, really. I got lost in this world and I remember listening to Power Slave and actually then also studying the inner cover where the band is depicted in one of the tombs with a sarcophagus in front of them and um, that just added so much to the mystery and those were the days when you just couldn't read about 
everything about the band. And you most certainly didn't hear a Bruce Dickinson complaining about somebody smoking weed in the crowd. So whether you're pro or con, it doesn't matter here. Um, I think we're a little bit saturated these days. Um, there's just too much information out there and um, everything was a bit more mystical way back then when we had, we had an LP and that was about it, you know. So it would be quite interesting to hear from your side. What is your favorite Iron Maiden album cover by Derek Riggs? And secondly, um, do you feel that the post Derek Riggs era album covers are on par with the quality or do you even prefer them? Or um, do you feel Riggs, um, Smallwood should bury the hatchet with Riggs, <laughs> have him take up his former duties? Um, that would be quite interesting to hear too. So post your comments um, underneath. I personally think, um, as you might have gathered, that Riggs' work was really phenomenal and um, the later Maiden stuff just sort of... It's too... Uh, I don't know if they, it was digitally created, but it looks very digital and um, it just doesn't have the same sort of feel to it. But um, without wanting to sound like someone saying, oh, in the past everything was better, no. It's just a nice um, topic to put out for discussion. Um, as for Derek Riggs, I think for a while he continued and did some work for Germany's Gamma Ray. And I think especially the album uh, Power Plant. But having mentioned digital, um, he actually went the digital route and you can see it on the album cover and it hasn't aged very well. So... Um, there are a few things that he brought out that, in my opinion, weren't as good. I think he also painted one for Gamma Ray, um, Land of the... I don't know if it was Land of the Free or something. But you can see the similarity between the Gamma Ray mascot and Eddie, especially in the sort of mouth-jaw department, so it looks very similar. Um, as for Derek Riggs's current work, I'm not familiar. I'll have to dig around. So if you guys have any links and or any knowledge of what he's doing at the moment or these days, do also drop it in the comments below. I'd be interested to know. So yeah, um, great cover art. Um, I think all the, the I, I don't think he did a dud at all. Um, I, if I can look at all the album covers and I'm sure I have my favorites. But from um, the self-titled uh, album to Killers, to Number of the Beast, to Peace of Mind, um, then um, Power Slave, um, Live After Death, phenomenal album cover that, and um, obviously Somewhere in Time and Seventh Sun, which we haven't mentioned yet, also a great concept, you know, that has a bit of a Dali, Salvador Dali approach to it with all the weird things happening there in the ice landscape. Ah, really great, um, very inspirational, very, and I feel always capturing the mood of the album, you know. Um, I could actually sort of listen to the album and, and feel transported into that icy landscape, you know, it, it really fit like a glove. And um, I think the follow-up was then um, No Prayer for the Dying, which I thought was, yeah, it was more back to the bare bones approach, you know, sort of Eddie doing something. And, um, but for me, it was lacking the sort of next step. But I mean, I guess it's always a challenge as an artist to sort of top everything you've done. And, you know, so I guess the artwork is okay, um, but um, it's not going to rank in the top five, in my opinion. And then sadly, after that, um, various other artists have been doing Maiden's artwork. So um, quite interesting. Uh, you probably had that as well but i remember in south africa and namibia you could actually um, actually more south africa in a very highly conservative country um under sanctions and apartheid at that time amazingly you could go into a normal supermarket chain and then they'd have this section of wall posters that you could buy and obviously next to the cliches like the peace sign or a giant ham uh, airbrushed hamburger or Masters of the Universe or whatever movie was currently uh, in the cinema, you could actually get Iron Maiden posters. And my room was f plastered with them. So I had peace of mind. I had 
Run to the Hills, the actual artwork to that, A Phantom of the Opera, um, Life or Death. I didn't have somewhere in time, unfortunately, and, um, and didn't have Seven Sun either. But um, there were quite a few available at the time. Power Slave was out there, Aces High, there was an Aces High artwork. So um, really cool that, and uh, Lord knows what happened to them. And, and today I can kick myself, because I, I would give anything to have those back. And you would see them here, obviously. Now at the moment I'll have to make do with my Dio and Sabbath. A2 posters and some venom and except over here you can't see them but that's yeah how the story goes anyway that was a short little Derek Riggs tribute um I'll be popping in artworks here and there in the video and um right after the conclusion I'll just put them all up in summary again for you rock on and see you next time